or two what? Of these live streams, you'd want oh, to just do. one, just one. Okay. Cool. All right, we are live. Hello, Kelsey, how are you what? doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I appreciate you, uh, you joining us on this lovely, lovely. I guess it's midday for you and morning for me. Yes, correct. East Coast, West Coast, Tupac and Biggie. <laughs> what up? Um, cool. So, guys, uh, today we are going to cover um, how to stay really lean um, without counting your calories, without you know playing macro matrix or counting macros um, ever again. And if you guys are brand new to this group, I'll say it again. I've already said it once, but um, this is it, we're with the Metabolic Mama Secrets. Um, our company is DC Fitness. Our program is the Metabolic Mama Method, and what we do is we basically, our whole mission is to really empower moms um, with young kids by giving you the knowledge um, and the skills to really skyrocket your energy, skyrocket your metabolism, um, lose 15 or more pounds, get super lean without cutting out cheap foods or meals out or alcohol or having to go to the gym. Like we just want you to teach you how to fit this into your current lifestyle. Yeah. So we're going to go, we're going to give you guys the thousand foot overview but um if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching and to be taken through our full system so which is the mama macro method metabolic priming and then the intuitive eating method go ahead and dm us mama for more info that's m-o-m-m-a and of course if you want to learn how to eat more food eat more fun foods and also skyrocket your energy and metabolism all while losing one to three pounds per week dm us today right now and then if you are live i want you guys to comment hashtag live or if you're watching the replay go ahead and comment hashtag replay and smash the heart and like buttons too while you're at it now dylan what is intuitive eating and what are its benefits i'm going to get into exactly what that is and obviously you're going to cover a little bit later in more detail mm -hmm. but uh, today just kind of give you guys an overview of what we're going to cover um we're really going to cover basically like how to use intuitive eating what it is, um, how to use it without having to track your calories or, or enter anything on my fitness pal or weight watchers, anything like that. Um, what it actually is and when you should do it. If there is a specific time that you should do it. There's there's pretty much like two, maybe a little bit more uh scenarios. So if you fit into one of those two baskets. Um, and then there's really five keys to intuitive eating as well that I'm going to cover. But Intuitive eating kind of just like summed up and, and Kelsey, I know you're gonna get into this in a second, but it's basically like eating based on your, your, your own body's intuition. So listening to your hunger cues, listening to your fullness cues, basically like eating when you're hungry, stop when you're full. So whether that means like you getting an extra plate of food or you only finishing half your meal, it's really just getting back in touch with those internal cues, um, which is our body, right. And our mind telling us, um, when to start and stop eating and what we actually are, are craving. Um, Kelsey, I know you're going to dive into that in a little bit, but the facts like are, are this is that you actually do not have to log your food for the rest of your life. Like I'm the first to tell you that food logging and counting calories and counting macros is not sustainable, right? Um, and, but it is gonna be the most efficient and effective way to lose body fat and reverse diet. So like, let me say that yep. first. Um, macros are great and, and you know, calorie tracking is great, but once you hit your goals, you, you don't really need to um, log your food anymore, count your calories. And- Intuitive eating is a skill, right? This is this is a skill. It's a set of knowledge with that skills. And just eating intuitively, which I know a lot of coaches are just like telling their clients to eat intuitively, um, before you actually create foundational habits and reprime your metabolism and get to your goals is going to be a recipe for disaster. So we're going to take you through how to do that in, in, in more detail. Yep. So exactly. Now, the old way of doing things were to count your calories, lose your body fat, get to your goal weight, um, and then keep counting calories after you've hit your goal, typically at the same calories that you were at. Um, and then you'll start gaining the weight back because you get burnt out on the food logging. You don't have enough of the knowledge or the food skills in order to maintain your weight without logging. So the new way of doing things, which is also what we do, it's the metabolic mama method at DC. Um, we start with the mama macro method to get to your goal physique. Second, we do the reverse dieting method to get your metab metabolism high AF so that you can meet, 
um, eat more food and not gain the weight back. So a lot of times people just eat more food because they reach their goal weight, but we actually um, do it strategically. That's the reverse dieting phase. And then finally, the intuitive eating method so that you can maintain your metabolism and the current body composition without counting calories or stressing about what you're going to eat ever again. Yeah. And just to kind of like, kind of uh, hit on that a little bit, like if you could really imagine just like a place of eating where you're, you're not stressed out, you're not thinking about what you're going to eat, um, you know, all day long, you're eating, you're using your, your food as like an opportunity to really soothe yourself instead of it to like band-aid and, you know, something that you're feeling or emotional eating and not worrying about like the grams of protein that you're hitting and the calories that you have left for the day. Cause that can be stressful. And like, if you can imagine that, like, this is where we want to take all the moms from our program, you know, through the mom macro method, through the reverse dieting and through intuitive eating, when they get to intuitive eating, you know, and I want to get them to a place where like, they're waking up full of energy, right? They're like ready to smash their day. They're heading to the kitchen. They're like, Hmm, what am I craving? And then they basically make what they want. So like, you know, if you can imagine like making some f- delicious French toast, um, maybe a healthy version, because it's going to make you feel better and you're eating based on like how you're feeling and not like, you know, to maintain a certain physique. And, you know, you sit down with your kid, you're like enjoying every single bite. You're conversing with them. You're getting really relaxed. They're feeling that too. They're seeing mom just like absolutely, you know, eating what she wants and staying super healthy and lean and setting a really good, healthy example. And I think the biggest thing is just getting back to that place. So you feel relaxed and you feel back in control um, because, you know, you're full, uh, you're able to play with your kids and just like not worry about food. And you, you basically have food freedom at this point. Yes, exactly. That's the goal. So now how to use intuitive eating while also staying lean without tracking your food. So how you do it is obviously you want to get your goal physique, like through our program, we do the macro method, then the reverse diet, and then the intuitive eating. So how we do that is we slowly take off one day of logging and then two days of logging, and then four days of logging, and then until you're at the point where you're not logging anymore, you're just intuitive eating, um, and listening to your body's cues, because, um, so what intuitive eating is, to kind of just dive into everything, it's eating, like Dylan said, it's eating based off of your own body's intuition of what to eat, how much to eat, and when to eat it. The reason why we start with um, the macro method is because a lot of times, um, we aren't eating enough and we need to track first um, and kind of heal our metabolism. So the two different ways of when you should do it, um, obviously after a reverse diet, so wean off of the reverse dieting to get into the intuitive eating, that's like the good macro reverse diet, intuitive eating. The other way is if you have a poor relationship with food, which I'm a prime example of that. So again, like I kind of just said, Um, If you have a poor relationship with food, starting out with the tracking isn't always going to be your best bet. Your first best bet would be the intuitive eating, work on healing your relationship with the food, and then go into tracking. So those are kind of the two different ways of when you should do it and obviously what it is. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just like um, Kelsey was saying, you know, I I have uh, struggled a lot with like a very unhealthy relationship in the past, just kind of like stem from my youth, um, <clears throat> undiagnosed eating, that type of thing. And, and, uh, you know, I went through a period of mindful eating and intuitive eating around like 2013. And that really just kind of helped me set up myself in the best position to have success when I was actually tracking macros. Um, because if you just go in that and, and you're, you know, you, you tend to you stress eat a ton or you're emotional eating, or you, know, you have like this very unhealthy relationship with food and with your body, Um, it's great to really get back in touch with those internal cues, that hunger, that fullness, those cravings, and then use that and pair that up with the external, right? This is how much protein you should have. This is how much calories you should have. And you can use both. So you might want to put your your fat loss goals, your physique goals on the back burner for a little bit. So you can put yourself in the best position to, you know, lose one or three pounds per week without derailing yourself because you've been jaded or because you were stress eating because you're emotional eating. Um, there's five keys to intuitive eating, and this is kind of what we take our clients through. Um, and this is, I'm basically going to take you through this, and I also made a matrix for you guys. So if you guys want that, uh, your, your guide to intuitive eating, um, you can comment below, you can DM me. I'll also go put it in the group tomorrow uh, that I got that. Shout out to Marie, a program director who um, took like three hours designing it. It's really, really good. Basically, there's five steps 
for um, five things that we have our clients focus on when we take them to two to people. And what I have my clients focus on is number one is eating without distractions. A lot of times we're eating with distractions and that is totally taking us out of the moment and we're not in touch with our stomach and our hunger pulls and our you know, fullness cues. So a lot of times we're distracted and we just want to read. I'm not saying like remove your kids and your family from the dinner table because that's not so distracting. I'm saying like TV, social media, things that you really just get engulfed with reading a book, reading a newspaper, that's really going to take you out um, of that connection, that mind, mind to stomach connection. So that's number one is just removing all distractions. Number two is, is to eat what you're craving and not eat what you think you should be eating, right? Eat what you're craving. So think like, do I want hot or cold food? Do I want sweet or savory? Do I want crunch or smooth? Like, what are you actually really craving in that moment? And really like take a look at that and make something around that, right? Um, focus. The third thing is to really just focus on the taste and texture. So like when you're actually eating, have you know, uh, if you practice meditation or mindfulness and, and you are, or you have uh, read about mindful eating, it's really just the process of just like using food as a meditative process and using it to soothe you and, and calm you down and relax um, instead of a mask, right? So you're using it to like really focus on the taste, the texture. Um, when I do it, I always focus on like my stomach and I'm actually just like, every time I eat and like it comes all the way down my stomach, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking like, okay, cool. How to, how are my satiety levels? Like how satisfied am I right now? How full volume wise does my stomach feel? If you actually do it and you stay really, really in touch, you have like a good connection you develop over time by practicing it, you'll notice how quickly you get full. So it really helps you with that, with, with that overeat. Um, the fourth thing is to, um, yeah, focus on your hunger and fullness cues. I think I kind of covered that in three, but um, using a scale of one to 10. So while you're eating and before you're eating, you know, assess where your hunger is out of one through 10. So 10 would be like, um, I am super full. And one would be like, I am about to pass out and die because I haven't eaten in like three days. Right. And so you kind of want to measure like, okay, where am I on that scale right now? You know, am, is it just psychological hunger? Is like, is it physical hunger? Like, where am I on that scale? And then kind of assess and make a game plan from there. Right. We always talk about with our clients and like, we have a craving, right? And then we have like the action of actually taking on that craving. Well, what intuitive eating it does, it just gives us a barrier between those. So we have the craving, we're assessing, okay, how hungry am I? What am I craving? And then we take action or we don't take action. A lot of times what you'll notice is like, oh, I actually like am good. I'm just like super stressed. Maybe I need to call a friend or I need to take a bath or I need to take a break from work. Or I need to get out of like some sort of toxic environment, you know? Mm -hmm. um, fifth is um, adding a uh, protein... Uh, a lean piece of protein each meal and a, and, a, and a fistful of veggie each meal. Obviously, I was talking about eating what you're craving, right? And so how does that fit in? Well, as long as you're getting like three palm-sized pieces of protein um, and you're getting three fist-sized uh, pieces of veggie throughout the day, you're totally fine. You kind of mix and match it how you like. Um, you're not going to be craving sweets all day. There are some times in the day that you are going to be craving more uh, savory stuff or maybe like more hearty, healthy stuff um, to really fuel your day. You want to think about in, there's a lot of things we we talk about with our clients, but one thing I know Kelsey always brings up, up is, you know, eat, eat something, but eat it, it, it. I mean, whether you don't or do eat something, you want to think about, okay, I'm, I'm craving like something, I'm craving like a cake right now, right? And it's like 12 p.m. And you know what I mean? It's just like, and that's fine. But you want to think, okay, I can have this cake. You don't want to restrict. You want to be like, I can have this cake. But how is that going to make me feel afterwards? And I feel like I want, I'm cool. Like I want to get a little like sugar come up to go for it, you know? But if you're like, you know what? It's like midday, I have a bunch of work. Probably not going to make me feel too great. Then you have that wedge, right? So it's not about restricting. It's about opening up all the food choices and, um, you know, really allowing all the foods to come in and, and just use your body's intuition to eat. So this is the matrix um, that I created. So DM me. Or you can comment below if you want it. But this is basically what intuitive eating is. It's covering everything that we went over. What the what the problem with intuitive eating was um, is that Kelsey covered so perfectly. Um, and then basically how we go in from the mom macro method to the reverse dieting system all the way to the intuitive eating phase and what to focus on. So if you want this guide, uh, DM me, comment below, and uh, we will make sure you get that. Kelsey, I know you had your own experience with intuitive eating. So I want to ask about your experience with it, like all that stuff and take it from here. Yeah. So before I get into that, I also wanted to add that sometimes, not all the time, but 
sometimes your cravings are a sign that you may be deficient in something, right? So I know a common one is if you're craving like chocolate, I believe it's a magnesium deficiency, which is actually really common. Magnesium deficiencies are super, super common. So once you start learning and listening to your body, you can kind of tell what your cravings mean. I know that's what I did. Um, like if I'm craving fruit or something healthy, obviously I need those nutrients or like water, right. you know what I mean? So definitely the more you get in tune with your body, the more you'll be able to read your cravings and see what you actually need. So a little bit about my story and what I went through. <clears throat> Um, I, same thing as Dylan, I struggled with the restrictive eating, which of course leads to binge eating for a long time, like all throughout high school and most of college, I struggled with it. Um, and obviously I studied like, like exercise science, I was getting, um, my certification. So I wanted to be a good role model for the clients I would potentially have. So what I did was decided to not have a physique goal because that was always in my head. I always wanted to reach a certain physique. Um, and it was so hard to get there. Like, why was it so hard? So I just let go of it. And I started um, just focusing on nourishing my body instead, while also implementing a good workout routine. So that was another thing I was also struggling with consistency with working out. So not only was I struggling with eating, I was also struggling with working out. So let go of the physical, I started focusing on lifting because I love lifting, it makes me feel great. So instead of kind of punishing myself, like, I got to work out today so I can eat. I have to work out today because I had a piece of cake yesterday. You know what I mean? So I really, really wanted to heal that because that is so unhealthy and it wasn't working for me anymore. It never was, but um, yeah. So I still wanted the change, but I kept it on the back burner. Like anytime it would come up, like, oh, I really want to change this about me. I would be like, no, that's not our focus right now. That's not our goal right now. So obviously it's hard. It's a lot easier said than done. So everything takes practice. So just keep pushing the physique goal back in on the back burner until my relationship with food was healed. Then I can kind of tackle that again. Um, but so what I did was I implemented a solid workout routine. I was going four to five times a week um, and ate when I was hungry and stopped when I was full. I had such a good routine going that I actually hated rest days. Like I really, <laughs> I hated them. I was like, damn it. Like I really want to work out today, but obviously I had to honor that because recovery is important as well. Um, but yeah, I really started to heal my relationship with food. I was listening to my body. Um, I was eating breakfast um, and I started to get, be hungry in the morning. Cause that's a common thing with restrictive eating is you stop being hungry in the morning. And a lot of people think that's like a good thing and it's actually a hormone imbalance. So I had, I did have to force myself to eat breakfast. That was probably the hardest part. Um, but once I nailed that, everything else kind of followed suit. And then perfect timing, I found DC Fitness and I started working with you guys. And obviously, um, the first step is like tracking and seeing if it works for you. So I was super, super hesitant and nervous, but Amber was my coach and she's a fantastic coach. She was super patient, just like this program is. It's tailored to everyone, making sure that you guys are comfortable. Um, so I started tracking again, but in a healthy way. And I actually, and don't let this scare you, I gained one to two pounds <laughs> roughly, um, but I really leaned out. And that was just from being more consistent with calories and protein, but I would not have reached that if my metabolism wasn't where it was. So I had to intuitive eat first to heal the metabolism from the restrictive eating in order to see the results. So that step was absolutely necessary. Um, and then this all happened um, within a full year. So that's another thing. Just be patient. Like this took me a full year, probably eight months to heal my relationship with food and then the remaining few months to see the results from tracking consistently, hitting protein goals, hitting the calorie goal consistently. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. You had that experience. And, you know, I know a lot of moms are kind of like kind of probably vibing really high with, with what you're saying. And I think for my clients too, and myself, when I, um, obviously I'm doing intuitive now and, and, uh, um, when I had in the past, switching that like you did with just like a strength goal or a workout goal or weightlifting goal, you know, obviously if you're someone that's listening, your mom that's listening and you, you don't lit, like lifting weights or whatever it is, maybe that's, you know, going, maybe that's like a step goal, um, mm -hmm. focusing on yep. that. Maybe that is getting back into a sport you used to play goal. 
Um, maybe that's like having a 60 minutes a day with your family that's active time goal, you know? And so it could be a lot of things. I like strength training because it's cool. You can see the progression from week to week. It's like you can control a lot of variables. It's fun. It's cool. It's fun lifting weights and um, getting the technique down. It's very technical. It's like, it's like a science and art, right? And so I think that's so cool that you had that experience, Kelsey. And, and thanks, uh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And so um, if your mom listening to this and you're like, oh, you know what? Like maybe I should start with an intuitive eating phase, um, you know, and you're really just kind of confused on where to start. You know, you shouldn't go from zero to 60 because yeah, well, you shouldn't. Um, and you're kind of just like looking and, and you've tried a bunch of stuff and maybe failed on it. You need some accountability. Or if you want to go through our whole system, mom macro method, reverse dieting, then intuitive eating, um, please DM me. Uh, someone from my team, Marie, Avi, Kelsey, you can comment below and, uh, you know, we can definitely help. Um, we can, we can kind of chat sort of a time, see what you're looking to achieve, see if we can help and, and how we can help and really just take it from there. Just DM me mama, comment below mama and uh, someone from our staff will get in touch with you, but appreciate you guys joining. I hope this was uh, helpful. There's a lot of nuggets that, you know, I know we kind of dropped and I always say, if someone took the time and watched all these lives and downloaded all these freebies, they could probably do our system like the whole way through. So like use this stuff. It's here to help you. And, um, you know, that's why we're giving all this stuff away at, at no charge. So enjoy the rest of your day. Kelsey, anything to say before you log off? Yeah, I love you guys. You got this. Big hearts. <laughs>